Hi, today is going to go down as one of my biggest ever video making days. I'm just uh, I'm just going to do a whole bunch for chapter six. I, I look back, I didn't really have any from last year. Um, so we've been talking about x, uh, where x is a uh, continuous random variable. And of course, every time I start, she wants to talk to you. She's actually the dog. She's downstairs, so that's you can tell she still has a loud puppy voice. Um, so this is section 6.3. It's about expectations and variances, so the mean and the variance uh, of a continuous random variable. And you'll see the definitions right here are exactly the same as the definitions that we used in Chapter 5 for discrete, except the, the differing factor here is the support. And, well, the support's going to go negative infinity, positive infinity, because a lot of times it's just picking up zeros. But, sorry, the big difference is you have an integral here. So... Remember, um, expected value or mean for a discrete random variable was you took p of x, the probability mass function, times x, and you summed it over x's support. So, I mean, essentially we have the same thing. We have our function f of x times x, but we're integrating over the support of x. Um, variance, same thing, f of x times x minus mu squared over the support. Um, this was kind of the formula we gave by definition, and here's the shortcut formula. We said you could take expected value of x squared, and actually you don't know that this is legal yet. Um, expected value of x squared, I'm bringing the x squared out instead of just the x um, minus mu squared, but we actually get to this property in the next video. So um, right now this is just the, the definition I'm using. So th these are all the same definitions as Chapter 5, except we're integrating over a region. And again, standard deviation square root of variance. So let's see where to go from here. Um, there's nice properties. I actually went through and showed you how you would drive them in this set. Um, X is a continuous random variable. What if you wanted to find the expected value of AX plus B? So I'm, I'm saying something like maybe you have a random variable 2X plus 3. And x could be anything. Um, so again, x is the time you talk to your mom. Maybe you want to know two times it plus three minutes. I don't know why, but um, so what this rule is saying is with an expected value, you can bring the constant out front and then expected value and break up into separate expected values across the sum and then add the expected value of 3. The expected value of an integer is just the integer. I mean, what do you expect 3 to be on the long run? We hope it's 3 unless the world is going to crash tonight. So this is 2 times expected value of x plus 3. So this is just saying for general, if you have a constant a and you have a constant b, you're allowed to break it up into separate expected values, and then you can pull the constant out front here, and there's your statement. And this is, um, this is pretty much the solution as to why I'm allowed to do that in all cases. Um, for variance, just because you have that uh, f of x, the mu minus x squared, or x minus mu squared in here, what happens is the variance, you can again um, break it up in the variance of ax plus variance of b. How much does a constant vary? Well, that's a pretty easy, the constant does not vary, so that's easy. So I'm just left with this piece, and, and you can probably see down here in the formula, what's going to happen is I'm going to get an a squared because of the x minus mu squared. So what happens is this a comes out front squared, so the variance of this, this is a common mistake, I see it a lot in statistics, people just pull out the a, and say it's a times the variance of x, but it's actually a squared. And this is a formal proof as to why that is coming out that way. And if, if the limits, uh, if, if some of these integrals don't exist, right? I mean, sometimes you're going to get from negative infinity to infinity, you're going to get, you know, it, it, impossible. So not all random variables have a mean and variance. I know that's kind of strange, and one of them is the Cauchy. But I'm just mentioning that if you do get an integral that you can't, and I'm not even saying... Um, you can numerically do it, but if it's undefined, then you don't have a mean or a variance. And I think that's it. Um, well, just on this page, all I did was find, um, this is pretty clear, if everything's equal likely, if x is on the interval 0 to 9 equally likely, here you can just see, uh, you know, if you balance both sides, the mean has to be at 4.5. 4, 4 um, here's another one down here. I found the mean, found the variance, just... Uh, 
f of x times x over support 0 to 1. I'm really doing it over all real numbers, but from 0 everywhere else, f of x is just 0. So that's why I'm not worrying about making all these other integrals too, because I'm just integrating out 0. And here's the variance. I'm using the shortcut. Um, f of x times x squared. Then on the outside, subtract mu squared. And I already know mu from up here. So um, these are all, again, just examples that are good. And here's probably the biggest theorem besides the central limit theorem. To me, I probably use this theorem more than any when I do um, probability. Well, one of the most when I do probability. And I'm looking at combining uh, different functions. And anyway, I will, uh, I will talk about that in a second. I think I'll just make one last video for that. And, uh, and I'll talk to you soon. Okay, let's shut this down.